Hello and welcome to the Men's Life Line of Camera, where we focus on helping to enrich lives of men, improve their lives by taking accountability, responsibility, and getting the dead heart of beating. Because let's be honest, it all starts with the heart, leads to the mind, leads to action. The more we take action, the better our lives get. And I'll be with you along the way, my brother. My name is Zach Goodman, and today we're continuing Journal Prompt Wednesday. In today's video, we're going to be discussing self-limiting beliefs. And in life, we are what we believe. As a famous book says, a man thinks this, as we think we are is how we're going to respond. And so many men, you're looking down the well, when your mind and your body and your heart's focused in, and all you see is a reflection of who you are, and you're not look, taking time to look up about the man who you can become and the man you are today. So I want to encourage you to take all your journals, and today we're going to be discussing self-limiting beliefs and judgments we have about ourselves. So what is a self-limiting belief? We have to start off with the basics of understanding words and definitions. A self-limiting belief is a belief you have about yourself and judgment that's holding you back from your potential. So for example, I should be a better man. I must be a better man would be a better word replacement. Words of judgment of things and words that hold you back that lead to shame and guilt. Shame like I'm not doing enough, I'm not good enough, who wants a man like me? When you word, use words like that, you're putting shame on yourself. And then the guilt is when whenever we focus in the past. I should have been a better man. I should have been there. I should not have lied, cheated, and you name it. When we are holding ourselves in these self-limited beliefs, what it does is puts us in a jail cell of not really moving forward in life. And my fellow brothers out there, I want you to know there is hope that you can become a better man today. And the first step is to acknowledge where you have fallen short. So on your journals, let's take out every self-limiting belief that you have about yourself. Just name three or four, right? As we build confidence, we start small and the more confident we feel and we exhibit to ourselves, the more we're able to hold on and address bigger issues like, I should have studied more in school, I should have not gotten drunk last night, and I should have, you know, be more careful with what I watch on TV, how much news I consume, and this. Because what happens with a self limiting belief is it's going to hold you back in life. And I think if everyone's honest with themselves to a degree, everyone has a self limiting belief. The question is, do you keep holding on to that belief or do you take steps to address it? And the first step is always to write it out. Write out the words of judgment that you have about yourself. That you're not smart enough, good enough, good looking enough, and then you're not taking care of yourself. And I wanna encourage you, my brothers, to do a word replacement. And start saying what you're going to do. So instead of holding yourself in this shroud of darkness and always looking down at that well, always seeing the darkness, just a reflection and never being happy with yourself, I want you to look at the potential you have within yourself. And the more that we can become to realize that everyone in life is struggling to a different degree, that will lead to compassion. And the hardest thing in life is to be grateful for the trials that we endure, the challenges we have. And that's hard, right? Because it's easy, when you're winning and you're being victorious, man, you can feel like on cloud nine, like everything's good, you feel at like the top of the world. Something happens and com that confidence gets shaken. So I want you to focus today on being thankful for the trials. Because the trials are going to show you where you're strong in. And at the same time, it's going to show you the areas that you have to improve upon. The weaknesses. Whether it's your temper. Whether it's your self-confidence, your belief in yourself. Whether it's understanding and learning who to trust in life. It's always important to understand who you can trust, not trust. So you don't become naive. It's always important to be thankful for the trials because they're going to show you where you're good at, where you've made growth, where you can document in your journal. 
and as your living, breathing, historical document of your life. And that's what a journalist, it's your living document of who you are and where you started and where you're going and where you want to end up in life. So I want to encourage you today to take time to write out what are some living, self-limiting beliefs. What is holding you back? What event, what events, what words have people spoken to you about that develop this self-limiting belief in yourself? Because once we can recognize those self-limiting beliefs, then we can do the opposite. So for example, I should be a kinder man. I should be more compassionate man. I should be more charitable man. Okay, that's a judgment, meaning you're putting shame and guilt on yourself and saying that you're not doing those things and you're not there yet. So bear with me, let's just do a word replacement. Let's focus on I ought, I will, I must become more charitable. Being charitable is giving my time, my money, resources, so that way I can help and serve people out of love and kindness and compassionate, not selfishness. And that's something that takes time to learn is to do things because it's the right thing to do. Because it's being a good man. It's being a good leader, father, spiritual leader. And the more that we seek to do things out of love and compassion and servitude, the more likely we are to grow in ourselves that the right people will come to our lives. If you call yourself a lousy friend, my friend, then you're going to continue to act like a lousy friend. So a part of understanding self limiting beliefs is to find it. So if you don't feel like you've been a good friend, define it in the journal. Where are you fallen? Where have you made mistakes? Because the only way to grow and learn is to recognize the examples of the past to be a teacher for the present, for the future you. So if you want to be a better friend, because you want to be a better friend, write out where you've fallen. And then on the flip side, write out to you, and only you can define this, what is a good friend? And let's go beyond trustworthy, loyal, compassionate, doesn't want up. And let's take time to define that just a little bit more to dive deeper. A good friend who's loyal, someone I can trust to, someone I can call at three, four o'clock in the morning, they're gonna be there. Someone's gonna check up on me. And when I'm telling a story of victory, they're going to celebrate and cheer with me. If I tell a story of sorrow and sadness, they're going to mourn with me and be sad with me. And they're going to connect with me and learn how to be silent. So I want to encourage you today to take out your journals and write out those self-limiting beliefs on one side and then on the other side to focus on where you can be victorious. And understand that you you can become an overcomer. And that's something that revolves around an identity. Having an identity of being an overcomer, overcoming difficulties, being joyful and triumphant, and understanding that trials will help us grow and learn and become better and better with each and every time that we face them. And it's also going to bring us to humility and understanding that we're not always going to have everything right. We're going to make mistakes, and we're going to make the same mistakes until we learn a lesson. And that's where you can see life as an adventure. It's a lesson. It's a growing opportunity. My brothers, it's time to rise up. It's time to cast off this, if you spirit, this demeanor, this mindset that these self-living beliefs have held you captive for. And to take on new life new purpose, and becoming an overcomer, an overachiever, more humility, compassionate, by understanding that you can overcome the self-learning beliefs. But we have to first, I encourage you to really do this, write them out. So you can so you get them out of your mind and out of your heart and put them on paper and discuss how this is going to be a story of your triumph. As Tyler Tope says, when we make mistakes and we have setbacks, a setback is a set forward for an opportunity to overcome. Another common word is saying fail forward. Because when we fail, make mistakes, we can learn from it and grow from it. And I've talked to a lot of good people, a lot of successful people. They've always said the same thing consistently. I learned from my more, my, from my failures and my successes because I learned not what to do. So let's go up there with a the growth mindset, with a positive mindset, with an opportunity that you can become better. 
And I hope you've been blessed by this message, by this video. And subscribe to the Men's Life on the Camera where we help encourage men to live the best lives, to reach the full potential and their capability, and to reclaim their lives. I hope everyone has a blessed day.